I want you to imagine for a second getting maybe the worst, most shocking news of your life. Something that may end or take your life. You've all pictured that moment where you get a diagnosis. But what if that diagnosis was stage four cancer? What would that feel like? Yeah, I woke up tired some days, and for sure I pushed myself past points of exhaustion in order to hit a goal, but I never thought anything was wrong. So I went and got these tests done, and I thought, I really thought I was gonna get the MRI back, and it was gonna be like, oh, look, I can brag about this, and look at these blood tests. Instead of that, it just came back, big red flag right in my stomach, colon cancer's been detected. I was told I would be dead most likely in October. It put my whole life in perspective, and boom. I say this all the time, I don't have bad days, but I have bad, I have bad moments. I am an intense person and I have been a control freak my whole life. So I've always been the person where when anything is bad, it's like, oh, it's no problem. I can work harder or I can make more money or I can find the resources or no matter what, I'm just not gonna give up. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden I realized how completely out of control I was. Instead of worrying so much about things, I said, okay, well, there's a lot I can't control, but maybe there is more that I can control than I realized. Most stuff does not matter, and I wish more people would look at their life and realize that. The little stuff that drives you crazy, if it's not gonna matter in five years, don't give it five minutes. The only things in life that actually matter are the stuff that makes you smile, period, that's it. Do you love it? Are you happy? Are the people you're spending time around the ones that you want to? Are the activities you're doing, is it the hobby you like? Or do you just do it because? No more just doing stuff because, because that crap doesn't matter. You start looking at life like this moment's wow, precious, wow, this wow. moment's precious, this one's precious. And you chase those instead of things, instead of other people's opinions, instead of any of that stuff. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today's tone of the show is a little bit different because I think it's maybe one of the most important, if not the most important show that I've done. And the reason for that is I want you to imagine for a second, and you've probably imagined it, getting maybe the worst, most shocking news of your life. And something that can scare you. Something that may end or take your life. You've all pictured that moment where you get a diagnosis. But what if that diagnosis was stage four cancer? And you're told that you have six months, maybe a year, eight months to live. And you're in the prime of your life. You're in your 30s when you get that news. What would that feel like? What would your emotions be? How would it impact the people around you? How would it change you? And I have somebody sitting across from me that I have grown to love very much. She's a woman that uh, I started coaching. She pays me the big bucks to coach her. And as I got to know her well, I found out how talented she was. She's a seven-figure earner in different businesses. She influences millions of people on social media. And just as we got going to take her career to another level, she got some shocking news that was completely unexpected. And so I want to share her story and her emotions with you today because I think it's relevant to you in all your lives and it'll give you perspective. So Jesse Lee Ward, also known as Boss Lee on Instagram, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks, Ed. I'm excited to be here. I'm already crying, so great. This <laughs> is going to be awesome. <laughs> We're going to get you going. So let's go right to it. Everybody has that fear yeah. of, I've got cancer, and it's stage four. It's metastasized. I want to know, because we've decided we're going to be very open today to affect people's lives. Yeah. Take us through how it even happened that you heard the news and then what that moment was like and what does it feel like in your life when you actually get that news? Yeah, so I think I never actually thought about what that would be like for me. Mm -hmm. I was 34 at the, I'm still 34, mm -hmm. but um, I definitely thought about it for other people or people that I loved or I watched some of my family members go through cancer mm -hmm. but and not die from it necessarily, but just kind of seen people get sick before. And I never actually thought about it for me or what that would look like. And maybe that's why I got sideswiped the way I did. And it, it really humbled me nearly, I mean, immediately it brought me to my knees. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually went and did an M a full body MRI mm -hmm. and a gallery grail test because Tony Robbins said to in life force, <laughs> but um, also just because I thought I was in the best shape of my life. Which and you were. So I really was. I went on a health journey starting in May of mm -hmm. 2022. Uh, I was intentionally losing weight. Mm -hmm. So, and it didn't feel super fast to me. It was 20 pounds or something in nine months. It mm -hmm. wasn't anything crazy where you'd be like, oh no, some, you know, mm -hmm. something's wrong. 
uh, and now when I look back at some photos, I can see that I'm, I was a bit gaunt in my eyes. Mm. I was getting a little bit too sunken in. I was getting a little too skinny, but I felt incredible. Mm. And I've always been a top performer and, and high achiever. And I know a lot of these people listen to you. So I hope they mm-hmm. start saying, oh, gosh, maybe I should do some of these tests yeah. because, yeah, I woke up tired some days. And mm-hmm. for sure, I pushed myself past points of maybe exhaustion, if you will, in in order to hit a goal, but I never thought anything was wrong. Mm. So I went and got these tests done and I thought, I really thought I was going to get the MRI back and it was going to be like, oh, look, I can brag about this and look at these blood tests and look at all this stuff because I had been doing blood tests quarterly for a while. Mm -hmm. And instead of that, it just came back, red, big red flag right in my stomach, Mm. which ended up being metastasized lymph nodes. And then in my lower right colon area, right at the cecum where the small and large intestine attached were, were tumors. And then the gallery grail test comes back. I'm actually flying back from the Bahamas when, when we get that news. And it says, yeah, it's got colon cancer has been detected. And mm-hmm. then a colonoscopy and all this stuff. And it it makes you realize how fragile life is. Mm-hmm. It makes you realize everything you thought you knew maybe wasn't true. Yeah. Uh, and it makes you realize how precious the people that matter really are, what matters and what doesn't matter. It mm-hmm. put my whole life in perspective and boom, I mean – seconds Mm. and it's it's been a journey uh you know this but i uh i was told i would be dead most likely in october correct they told me i would there was there's no way i'm going to see christmas Mm -hmm. um which i was just sharing the story earlier with somebody but i was talking about how amazing you've been through all of this and i said i sent that text when they sent me since uh when the doctor said that to me to three people Mm-hmm. And one was you, and mm-hmm. you called me right away. Mm-hmm. And I remember right where I was, and you're like, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You visualize the biggest Christmas mm-hmm. and the lymph notes going mm-hmm. back and all this stuff, and mm-hmm. um, which was super useful in the time. Mm-hmm. But I had to make a decision between, uh, and I'm not telling anyone what to do, by the way. Do what you feel like is right yeah. for you. Um, but to either do really aggressive forms of chemotherapy and potentially live two and a half years with no quality of life uh, or just attack it and and really learn how to heal every single bit of me. And that's the route that I've been taking. We're going to talk about that. I want to go back to you for a second. So just so you guys know, um, this is a really intense woman. Um, (laughs) In fact, one of the most intense and driven people I've ever met in my life. So when we met, we had met a few times. I want everyone to just have context for this. Jesse Lee and I had met a few times, like backstage at events. We'd cross each other's paths in speaking. And then it ended up that I ended up, she was in a group that I was coaching, and then we coached one-on-one. But I remember when we, I did an event at my home, and she came, and I remember thinking, my gosh, she looks incredible. Yeah. She looks different. I tell her all the time, I don't know if you're like my daughter or my young sister or what, but, you know, I have this affection for her. And But I remember thinking to myself, she looks incredible i mean the best she's ever looked even if you see photos of her online like it was a major transformation and i remember commenting on it i think even to you and to the group of people too how great you looked and then it was not that long after that this happened and i remember for me it took my breath away because i'm thinking this is a beautiful person and their woman in the prime of her life at 34 years old and a million years i was not expecting that phone call from you what is it like when what happens in your body? I think everybody would like, they fear this moment in their life. Mm-hmm. And you've now had, I think, the some in an odd way, the blessing of experiencing it, meaning that we're going to bless millions of people today that have never actually talked to someone live who's like, my life is in jeopardy right now. I had this amazing life. I'm a millionaire. I'm traveling. I'm beautiful. She had recently met a guy that she's super crazy about. And wham, in that moment, does it... Does it take your breath away? Do you do you have a flood of your life before your eyes? What what actually happens to you? I'm curious in that moment. What what went through your body and your mind? I think everyone's different, but for me, it wrecked me. Hmm. Really, you would never know like, it being your friend. You're so strong. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I am, but I have a lot of moments. Like hmm. I say this all the time. I don't have bad days, but I have bad I have bad moments. Hmm. And when somebody's going through something like this, it's like you. I am an intense person and Mm -hmm. I have been a control freak my whole life because of childhood stuff and just Mm -hmm. I was forced into leadership positions at a really young age. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been the person where when anything is bad, it's like, oh, it's no problem. I can work harder or I can make more money or I can find the resources or no matter what, I'm just not going to give up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized how completely out of control I was. Mm -hmm. 
I realized this is not this is not just you slap a band aid on it, mm-hmm. and even going into surgery, you know any I guess anybody who tell, who has cancer or is diagnosed with cancer will tell you this. You're so I was so hopeful. I look back at the posts of that day in February when I chose to have the surgery to remove part of the colon and, mm-hmm. and the tumor and some uh, thirty lymph nodes surrounding it, which twenty six had cancer mm-hmm. in it. And I remember making the post about just knowing, oh gosh, I know that, they're, that the surgeon's hands are going to be, you know, protected by God, and I'm, I'm going to get out of this, and it's going to be amazing, and I'm going to show people you could. And no, mm-hmm. no, Jesse Lee, that's literally not what happened. Like what mm-hmm. happened instead is pathology comes back. It's 26 out of 30 lymph nodes. It's metastasized, and we're staging you at stage four because it's in your throat, it's in your neck, it's in your stomach. Mm-hmm. It's like. Everything you thought you can, could control, you can't. Mm. And it was especially frustrating because I was already on a health journey. Yeah. So then it's kind of this like smack in the teeth of, mm. you know, and I've, I, I've, I'm an emotional person anyway. The mm. first time we had that one-on-one kind of coaching thing, I'm, right. <laughs> right. I'm a boo-hooer anyway. Right. But I, like, I've never cried the way I've cried. I've mm. never been so emotional about things. And you, you start learning you're triggered by stuff. You start noticing even today, I'm driving in L.A., and there's a sign about cancer. Why? I don't know. You know, it's like, <laughs> why is this stupid sign here? It's, why is it a theme in so many movies? Mm. Things you don't under you don't think about until you're in a situation like this, and then it's the loudest thing. Your RAS is so activated. My yeah. reticular activating system, it's like, think of a red car. Okay, what are you yeah. thinking of? A red car. Every yeah. single thing, it's, it's all over. Uh, do, and you I think, just, do you think about, do you think about, like, why is this me? Does that come up? Yeah. For sure, because mm-hmm. I felt like you said I was in, I'm in the prime of my life, and I felt like wow, I'm not married, mm-hmm. I don't have kids. I texted you this too. Yeah. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't like. I, where is my legacy aside from all mm-hmm. these people I've helped in business, mm-hmm. and you know the lives I've changed through that? What am I going to do? I have. What is going on? Why me? Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, you know, oh my gosh. Oh, well, actually, it's powerful. This is actually really powerful. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Why me? Mm-hmm. But then I actually started dissecting my life or things that happen to me and i started realizing okay so if your body everyone has cancer in them by the way like you can read this anywhere this is not this is not me trying to scare anybody mm-hmm. everybody has cancer cells in them it's whether they're activated or not that it turns into something that can kill you mm-hmm. okay so everyone should know that to begin with mm-hmm. everyone has gene mutations mm-hmm. it's a term it, it, whether they turn on or not is dependent on your environment it's dependent on circumstances it's dependent on a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. well a bunch of gene mutations of mine have turned on mm-hmm. and the cancer cells in my body decided to turn on Mm. okay so with that knowledge then I went okay well if I've helped to create this as weird as that might sound yes well then how can I heal from this and that became really empowering for me Mm. because I then made a decision that I'm just going to change everything Mm. my whole life has to change and I got a lot of clarity from that instead Mm. of worrying so much about things I said okay well there's a lot I can't control but maybe there is more that I can control Mm. than I realized Mm. and so I decided to feel everything and I'll actually share something on this podcast nobody on earth knows but it's happening tomorrow so I'll tell you um I would tell you anyway but Mm. Forgiveness was one of my biggest things. I started reading a lot more about some of the ways things like this happen. Again, you know, why me, why me, why me? Well, I have not forgiven, even though I've said I've forgiven things. Mm. The anger and the grief and the sadness and the trauma and all the stuff from my childhood that has turned, it's turned me into who I am in a business sense. So I'm not Mm. mad about it, Mm. but I have not actually released it. And I can say online and in my speeches and in all the stuff that I do, you know, oh no, I'm, I'm, oh, you know, that's in the past and I've mm-hmm. released it and blah, 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 mm-hmm. all the right stuff to say. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to be real with your listeners, yeah. I didn't forgive mm-hmm. and I certainly didn't forget. Mm-hmm. And if you brought up a topic that really bothered me, I was the first to be like, yeah, let me tell you about it. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you all about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not, it's not useful. And so forgiveness has been one of the biggest things. And yeah, why me? Maybe because I grew up in a super toxic environment and maybe because I didn't have the greatest nutrition and maybe because, you know, I put myself in situations of stress all the time because I liked it. I was I like yeah. achievement. Yeah. Uh, but I also realized that, of course, it wasn't going to be a cancer where, you know, and there's no good cancer. So don't misunderstand me, but mm. it wasn't going to be a cancer where you just cut it out. Yeah, It was going to be a cancer where it's aggressive, just like me. And me healing from this is going to show a lot of people a lot of amazing things. It's going to give a lot of people a lot of hope. And it's going to probably give people 
their control back over their bodies and their minds and, and their what lives. What are you doing tomorrow? You didn't finish that. Okay. So finish it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for anyone who's already followed me on social media, mm-hmm. I've written many posts about it. I've talked about it a whole bunch of times. Uh, I essentially had a funeral for my mom five years ago. My mom's alive. Mm-hmm. Um, but she put us through situations as children that just never made sense to me. Like, we were in danger all the time. And I don't mean like, oh, you're like, okay, so she grew up not with a lot of stuff. I mean, like, we were physically in danger a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then there was a, there were five, it was five years ago at Christmas. I went and saw her anyway, you know, because I was always trying to like, okay, like, let me, like, you're supposed to have a mom. You're supposed to have a mom. You're supposed to forgive. You're supposed to whatever. And on Christmas, um, I'm not going to cuss because it's cussing, mm-hmm. but um, two times on Christmas Eve in front of all her friends, she said, she yelled at me that I was a stupid effing bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I walked out and that was just my final straw. I was like, I've got to set a boundary around this. Mm-hmm. I can't do this anymore. She makes me feel terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, she's drinking too much. I don't mm-hmm. know if she's on drugs. I don't know. What, like, I, I can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I had a funeral for somebody I loved. Mm-hmm. And I just said, I'll never talk to her again. Mm-hmm. And when all this was happening, I don't know, again, cancer or mm. maybe any of these serious things that people are going through it doesn't have to be cancer maybe it's mm. some kind of other d- other disease or or life circumstance it i have these weird epiphanies that come to me yeah and they're just these guided moments of yeah. intuition maybe or spirit or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them mm-hmm. um and it's almost like the holy spirit's whispering <gasps> there you go i don't know how else to explain it mm-hmm. and i woke up one day and i and i went I haven't even remotely forgiven my mom. Mm. Like I've cut her off, but I think about her all the time still. Like there is like there is a deep chord there. And um so I I this this happened in Barcelona about six weeks ago. I wrote her an email Mm. and I wrote her an email and I just said, Well, yeah, I haven't told anyone this. Mm. (laughs) Um I said you know, hey mom, uh, I'm writing this because I need closure and I don't know if you do too. And I went through it and I came from such a place of compassion. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I can't imagine being in your shoes and trying to do what you did. You were were pregnant with me at the exact age I am. Mm -hmm. And you were a successful woman. She was an assistant CEO at the National Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. She just was really bad with money. Mm -hmm. So we did not have anything and it was just being, who knows where all the money went. So I guess you never really know that when you're a kid, but she was brilliant and we just never had anything. And I said, I can't imagine what it would be like if me in this moment right now, as successful as I am, because I'm super successful, mom, Mm. like, I don't think you even know how successful I am Mm. because I blocked her everywhere. So I don't know. I guess Mm. you could Google me, but Mm. you have no idea. Uh, If you told me, no, now it's time to have a family. It's time to settle down. It's time to, Mm. to get married again and have Mm. kids and do all these things and take the parts of me that I, that are just mine, Mm -hmm. just mine Mm -hmm. and say, you don't, you can't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just gave her compassion. I told her about, this is really deep. Someone's going to be bad in the family. I say this Mm -hmm. if they listen, but I have 14 first cousins. I have a lot of aunts and uncles. It's a big family, Mm -hmm. tons of, there's tons of grandkids, great grandkids, all this stuff. Not a single person, not a single family member reached out. I talk to my big brother about it. We talk every day. And aside from that, there's no one. And I even wrote in that email to her. I said, how could I expect you to be this compassionate, loving, kind, caring, super maternal, loving mother when no one in our family is like that? And so I just, and I told her, I thanked her for things. None of it was, it was not an accusatory email. The whole thing was loving. It was my work ethics from you. Mm. My brains brains are from you. My ability to pick stuff up, boom, and learn Mm. it and just attack stuff is you. I know it's you. Mm-hmm. And I just gave her, I gave her her flowers mm-hmm. and I just said, you know, I just, I'm not, mm-hmm. I haven't forgiven you and I needed to send this so that I can, mm-hmm. so I can heal because I need to heal mm-hmm. and then move on. And she, and I never expected an email back. And the next day she wrote, uh, she wrote an email back and I read it at 2 a.m. in Barcelona. Big mistake. Couldn't sleep. <laughs> but, um, and it just said, I mean, I won't, the, the whole email doesn't matter, but the opening line is really powerful. She said, Jesse Lee. I don't need closure from you. I need my daughter. Uh-huh. And I was like, mm. come on, you know, like, mm. and it was this just beautiful email she wrote back. And, um, we chatted back and forth a couple of days and I just said, and she even said like, I would just jump on a plane to be anywhere you are. I said, well, right now I'm in Barcelona, headed to Germany tomorrow. So maybe don't jump on a plane today, but uh, I bought her a flight and she'll be in Dallas tomorrow mm. with me. So I'm so proud of you. Yeah. 
so proud of you. Sorry. I think one of the, I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> I, um, you know, everybody, you don't have to, uh, have a stage four cancer diagnosis to learn from her perspective and her wisdom. That's why I wanted her here today. You can start making these decisions right now. Okay. And that's why it's important to put somebody in front of you who is going through this. You're just such a remarkable human. And what's amazing about you and adversity like this is when you're special and you are special and all of you that are listening are special. When you get through something like this, it reveals the extra special in you. If you all went back and look at Jesse Lee's post from four, five, six years ago, you'd just see this boss Lee, just badass woman. <laughs> and this is brought out, it was already coming out, but it's brought out these beautiful sides of your personality, of who you really are. And I'm so grateful that you did that. And I'm so grateful that people get to hear this today because most people live like they're never going to die. If you're listening to this, you're under the illusion. Most people are like in your conscious mind, you go, I'm going to die someday, but you actually don't live like it. You actually don't. You believe everybody else is going to die, not you. And what I wanted to happen today with Jesse Lee, cause she's so articulate as well is to actually make you really face this right now because she's facing it right now. And, and what would you do if you were facing it right now? Who would you call? Who would you make amends with? What could you be doing right now to get healthier, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Let me just, just to set the stage, just so you all know, this is a woman who's worth a fortune. She's made seven figures for a very long time in multiple different businesses, in network marketing, in brick and mortar businesses. She has 1.6 million clients worldwide, by the way, in one of her businesses, 41 different countries. She's one of the top female speakers in the world. And with all of that, she's telling you that her, her perspective has changed. She gets this diagnosis, you guys. She has the surgery, and the next day is our coaching call, and she's in her hospital bed with a laptop doing the coaching call with me, and that wasn't her only meeting that day. I want you to imagine that. You got, what was it, 10 inches of your colon removed? Am I allowed yeah, to say Yeah, 10 that? to 15. 10 yeah. to 15, plus this tumor, the whole thing together. And the next day, she's on a call with me. How you doing? She's pumping me up on the call. <laughs> She's pumping me up from the hospital bed. That's the type of extraordinary woman that we're talking about here today. Just so start to ask yourself, how would you respond? How would you react? And I want to ask you a couple things, and I want you to be honest with me, and then I want to talk about some business stuff too. Sure. Are you afraid you're going to die? From this, no. And I don't mm -hmm. think I fear death anymore like maybe I used to. Mm -hmm. uh, you've heard it. Everyone's heard it. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, live like you're dying. Like you, I was you thinking of that Tim McGraw you know? song. Yeah, 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 same. yeah, I was literally thinking of it about <laughs> 24 seconds ago. <laughs> um, see, we're so aligned. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they say, oh, every day is not guaranteed. Okay, mm -hmm. all of these things are true. Mm -hmm. But do you really realize what you're saying when you say that? Mm -hmm. The answer for most of you listening is absolutely not no. Mm -hmm. I, there's a million ways I've changed because of this. Mm. But when I say I'm grateful every day, and I used to coach people, oh, I do a gratitude walk every morning, mm. which I do. Mm -hmm. I have for years, right? Mm -hmm. It's just part of what I do. Or go in the afternoon and I pray out loud. You know, mm. it's all, I've taught all these things forever. Mm. It is different when you actually realize every day is not promised. It mm. is very different mm. when you go, oh, a full mm. breath. Mm. It's completely different when your stomach doesn't hurt. Because you take these things for granted. Yeah. It's different when you notice how beautiful a sunset actually is or you, the, the way I am present with people now. Mm -hmm. And I was always good with relationships. Yeah. That's been one of my superpowers for a long time. Yeah. Now when I'm with people, it's, mm -hmm. it's quality time to a completely different level. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like this fear of dying it's, or thinking I'm dying. It's knowing that every moment is actually precious. And how much time can you how much good quality time and experiences can you cram into every day of every moment instead of just, I feel like most people are just these ships that pass each other. We, oh yeah, I hung out with so-and-so. Yeah, I spent time with Ed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw each other at that, that event or whatever. Mm -hmm. But did you, did you actually see him? Wow. Did you actually feel him? Mm -hmm. Did you pay attention to his energy? Did you actually connect? Did mm -hmm. you have a real moment or was it just, oh yeah, I was there? Because most of us are every day, yeah, I was there. Yeah, I went to work. Yeah, I drove home. Most of you don't even remember how you drive home because it's the same routine over and over again. Mm. Like, I, I feel like 
I've realized that my, the Jesse Lee version 1.0, she's she's dead. Mm. Who I used to be, she's gone. Mm. She has to be because mm. she's the one who created all this this illness, this dis-ease, right? Do you believe that? Yeah. I want to ask you a question about that. By the way, what you're saying is just absolutely brilliant. and it And you are smart, but you aren't this smart. And this is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. This is infinite wisdom. I say all the time that when we pray or we talk to whoever you believe in, you're talking to God or your maker. And when you get this infinite wisdom, this discernment, this intuition, these words that aren't yours, that's God speaking back to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening with you. And I, uh, I'm just curious, do you, do you, would you change something in your previous life meaning was going for it like you and I have gone for it in our life all it's cracked up to be because let's just be real part of the success you've built is affording you the the way you're being treated right now which you have gone for open about that yeah. in a little bit if you okay. like to. I want to do that so I want to I want to ask you first is now that you're you're 34 you've got this mm-hmm. diagnosis so and by the way she was literally told um you won't be here for Christmas mm-hmm. she was literally told that which, by the way, nice doctoring, by the way, nice medical bedside manner, which we'll talk about in, a, in another part of the interview coming up. Having said that, though, would you still have gone for it like a crazy person but maybe enjoyed it a little bit more? Or do you feel like some of the accolades and awards and all that was overcooked? And I'm really curious because I'm still that guy, too, who's like, I'm going. Mm-hmm. My intuition is I should be going, but I should be a little bit more of an observer and be present as I'm doing it because I absolutely relate to what you just said about – I was there, but was I there? Yep. It's, you know? it's what you just said. So it's, I don't think I would feel as fulfilled as a person if I could look back on it right now and go, oh, gosh, I really should have done more because mm. I really feel like I've been all gas, no brakes yeah. for a long, long time. Yeah. And I'm super proud of my accomplishments. And I look back on things like, wow, I'm really glad that I'm so thankful that happened. I'm grateful for that opportunity. Mm. Wow. Thank goodness I said yes. But I was also a yes man to everything. Mm. So this is a cool new stage where I've been saying yes to only things I really want to say yes to, wow. which I wish I had done sooner with some things. Because wow. you know, yep. there's opportunities you've taken, I'm sure, where you go, this is just not going to be it, but I'm just going to do it because I feel like, what if me, what if yeah. maybe one person, yeah. because we hear that in personal yes. development, like, what if the one person? Yes. I did way too much stuff where it was Same. that and it was just, you know, running myself ragged. But it's really, I'm not, I'm really, I wouldn't do anything differently, no. Because all of this is playing out exactly how it's supposed to. It's not my plan. And if you mm. really believe in a higher power, you believe in God like we do, mm. no, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be the example. I'm supposed to be the big voice. Mm. I'm supposed to already have the following, the platform that I do so that I save so many more lives, yes. so that I show so many more people a different way. Mm. It's really important. It is the way it, it is. Uh, but I wish in those moments, because I've won every award there is mm-hmm. for, for what I've done. Anything mm-hmm. I touch, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, like, invest in Jesse Lee because mm-hmm. it's going to turn gold. Mm-hmm. You know, she does it. Oh, my gosh. She she did that. Wow. Like, I'm always the top performer. Yeah. I told her when I met her, I said, if you were a stock, I would buy you <laughs> because <laughs> she's going up. And, and uh-huh. also, by the way, you said something I want to finish on, though. So neither one of us are medical doctors, although yeah. you're a lot more like one than I am now because of all the <laughs> medical care you've gone through. But you did say something that I want everyone to evaluate. You said you created this, meaning... Yeah. And I think I know what you mean. All the stress, all the trauma, all the reliving the trauma, all the holding on to it, all the intensity pointed in the right direction makes a lot of awards and a lot of money. Intensity Mm -hmm. in the other direction can do harm. And I was actually asking, you came up last week. My mom asked me how you were doing because I've told my mom about you. And um, we were talking about my dad's cancer. My dad still, my dad wasn't 34, my gosh, but my dad died young, relatively speaking. And I said, Mom, do you think dad's trauma that he held on to from his upbringing and his stress. And my dad was this tremendous worrier. Mm -hmm. I inherited that from my dad. Most things with our kids are caught, not taught. I always say, I caught that from my dad, worrying and anxiety. And sometimes being around my dad, he's just like, (sighs) like a sigh for no reason, you know? And I said, mom, do you think that maybe that brought some of this on or turned those genes on sooner? The stress and the anxiety and the worry. And my mom said, absolutely 100% yes. And I'm wondering is that what you meant by that you brought some of yeah, this on? Yeah, and I don't and I I know I don't I don't want to trigger any cancer patients or anything or sure. survivors or anything who go, "What? Like I didn't create this cuz mm-hmm. the cancer world's interesting. There's some people who think cancer is the worst thing that ever happened to them and there's some people who think cancer is the best thing that happened to them. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you I am in the second camp. 
Mm-hmm. And that freaks people out when I say that. It's mm-hmm. She said, what? Mm-hmm. She said, cancer is the best thing ever. Nothing was going to slow me down, Ed. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm-hmm. You, nothing. Mm-hmm. You, I, you, you just said I did a mm-hmm. coaching call from a hospital bed. Yep. Nothing was going to make me go, let's chill out a little bit. I don't, yep. you know, I just, I, it had to happen. I, I needed to smell the roses a little. Uh, but yeah, what I mean when I say I created this is, I was always running ragged. I was, you know, sleep was not the priority. The goals were the priority. The mm-hmm. changing other people's lives was the priority. The helping others and always extending an extra hand and not taking care of myself. Your own pleasure and enjoyment wasn't the priority. No, either. never. Right. I, and I, I think even in this season of cancer and everything, I am enjoying way more. And I don't mean because I'm saying no to things. It's part of it is that presence thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm still competitive. I really still don't know anybody who can outsell me right now even. Like, good luck. Like, I'm still still a monster. speaking all over the place, crushing it. Yeah. It's yes to stuff I want, no to things I don't want. Mm -hmm. And so it goes back to all these high-pressure things that I would put myself in and just, you know, yeah, the toxic situations. And again, the no forgiveness. My my mom was not the only person I didn't forgive. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people that that I did not forgive that I've had that I you know gosh this is I'm, it's almost like I feel like I'm in an a, a you know it's yeah, like one of the a, steps a, of AA like yeah. you forgive people yeah. uh, I'm really having to work on me as a person and so mm. the changes in Jesse Lee as an actual human being have been profound since February mm. it's not they're not little changes mm. they're I've always been a kind person. Mm-hmm. I'm even more patient and kind now, which mm-hmm. is a different kind of kindness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it, it's just, it'll completely, it, it just changes everything. Okay, so you, by the way, I just want to say something. I'm not a doctor either, but I think there's a power to saying I created this and so I can fix it. I think there's yes. a power to that. And even if you're not in that camp and you've, and you've had a disease, I think we would all agree that worrying and anxiety and, and anger or frustration isn't healthy. Yeah. So it certainly isn't helping things when we're that way. Well, so, I actually, I don't want to cut you off, but no, I, I, just, I asked my doctor in Germany two weeks ago because he was looking over my blood work and Germans are very direct. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he goes, oh, disaster. Really? <laughs> like, great. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> great. Right. And he didn't mean it in a bad way. Yeah. He just said, yeah, don't worry. We can fix all of this, but mm. ugh, this is a disaster. I said, okay. <laughs> and I said, well, I have a question then. Mm. When you see other patients that their blood work is this bad. Do they look like me? Yeah. Do they move like me? Do they, because I'm not in pain. I'm not in any of these things. He goes, absolutely not. He said, but you have the strongest mindset I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this health stuff is mindset over all of it. Yes, I have to treat all of it, but you have a belief system Mm -hmm. that you're going to win this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't. And and I, you know, I know, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza Mm -hmm. way more than I do, Mm -hmm. right? But even things like don't become your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You hear, oh, well, with cancer, I'm supposed to be really tired and I'm supposed to be really, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever, all Mm -hmm. these things. I'm supposed to look a certain way, walk Mm -hmm. a certain way. I got to stop doing all these things. I just didn't look up. I just didn't get on Google. You know, I just didn't become a diagnosis. I said, oh, wait. I remember walking out of my, my my colonoscopy. And I said, hey, you know, Doc, by the way, what, what stage do you think this is? He goes, I mean, it's at least three because I can see it's 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 in your lymph nodes too. Like everything's swollen down there. I said, oh, okay. Okay, stage three. Okay. no, Okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of walked out like, mm-hmm. I don't even really know what that means, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to let this ruin my good mood. I'm going to move forward. We're not gonna, I'm not going to jump to conclusions. I'm not going to get on WebMD and find out what, what, what it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say, like, sometimes I'll be like, well, what's coming my, my way? What's going on? Right. Whatever. And I told you earlier, I asked you, my doctor, hey, why are my lymph nodes a little swollen in my neck and my stomach feels like maybe? And he said, oh, I'm so excited. Your immune system's kicking on. Mm-hmm. This is your immune system working again. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's what this is. Okay. Because <laughs> Google said for sure <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. a goner, you know. Um, I love this new so. guy, by the way. That you're that you're working with, and by the way, everyone, I want to just interject, and then we're going to talk about diagnosis. We're going to talk some business too, but I want to say one thing to you. Um, you know, the ad the attitude that you've brought to this, I really believe, is the differentiator. And and she is, by the way, we've decided kind of through coaching that she is documenting her journey here. So if you don't follow her on social media, we're gonna there's gonna be an actual documentary, the whole entire thing, the journey of what she's going through. And I'm just so proud of the way that you've brought your mindset to this because 
you know, so many people that are listening to this right now have a challenge that they're worried about. And if anything happens to everybody, this should be one big perspective builder for you. Because whatever you're going through right now, more than likely, it's not quite as significant as what Jesse Lee's going through right now. Maybe it just gives you perspective that, hey, this disagreement I'm in with my spouse or this bill or I lost my job or, hey, this is a woman who was told you're not going to make it to Christmas. And I want to go to that part of it now, too. Talk a little bit about the different uh, bedside manners of the doctors. You don't need to name them, but I'm aware sure. of them. And then what you've chosen to do for treatment. Part of what you've chosen to do for your treatment, obviously, you can afford. Mm -hmm. But I'd be curious as to your advice. And we're not, by the way, making a, what she's going to do is tell you the recommendation she's made for herself. Which, by the way, okay. about 50% of the people that you know are like, you're crazy to be doing it this way, right? Mm -hmm. And 50% of the doctors are like, oh, my gosh, you should have been in chemo immediately. Mm -hmm. So by no means are either one of us making a recommendation of what you should do. Correct. But this is Jesse Lee's story her journey, her decisions, her experience that I want to share with you. So to the diagnosis point of the one guy that we both, you know, the Texas mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. to a few other things, just take them through that a little bit. So just to give people perspective, I've been to eight oncologists. So this is not one oncologist, two oncologists. This is not whatever. Um, some are integrative oncologists. The rest are your traditional practitioners. So mm -hmm. two integrative and then six are your, you know, normal, okay, you go to Texas oncology and whatever, right. okay? Uh, and so immediately so there's here here's the deal i don't judge any doctors at all period end of discussion because ultimately when you think about it to become a doctor that is a well-known oncologist and i was only going to well-known oncologists just because of resources and, and who i am thank mm -hmm. god if you think about it this person has gone to medical school for 12 years wow. everything they know is traditional standard of care mm -hmm. this is what they're taught period. You're not supposed to think outside the box. It's mm -hmm. not the goal. The goal is standard of care. Chemotherapy and immunotherapy is really big business. Mm -hmm. You can, and this is not, this is not opinion. You can just Google this mm -hmm. if you want to, or you can look into whatever. So I don't have, and, and then to become a well-known oncologist, that means you're practicing for decades. Mm -hmm. These are not young spring chickens, mm -hmm. you know, in their 20s or something mm -hmm. that I'm going to see. These mm -hmm. are older gentlemen mm -hmm. who have been practicing for decades. Mm -hmm. Just in your so, case, they happen to be gentlemen. Everybody correct. And I'm sure there's women, too. In right, my case, right, it was just gentlemen. Right. And so for 30, 40 years, this is what you know. Mm -hmm. You know full foxin of Austin. Mm -hmm. You know chemotherapy. This is, you know that the average lifespan for a diagnosis like mine is two and a half years. Mm -hmm. That's it. And that's if you do the most intense. And, mm -hmm. and you ask, is this for a cure or are you trying to keep me alive? Oh, I'm sorry. There's no cure. Mm -hmm. Every single last one of them. So I went to so many oncologists because, yeah, you know what? Maybe I was a little bit of a hope seeker where mm -hmm. I just wanted somebody to say, maybe not. Maybe mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And instead of that, it was the constant you know, do this, do the, it's, mm -hmm. it's the chemo, it's the chemo. And so after the, so surgery is step one mm -hmm. and then chemo mm -hmm. is step two. And so I would just ask each of them, I'd say, so if I do nothing, mm -hmm. according to them, not nothing, but if mm -hmm. I do nothing, no standard of care, what's the prognosis? And some doctors do not play God, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. There was one doctor in particular who, it was the most devastating moment of the entire journey mm -hmm. wouldn't even look me in my eyes by the way face is down like this and he goes you'll be dead in six months october october you're definitely not seeing christmas mm -hmm. no and then he said but if you do the most intense versions of chemo we're just going to blast you we can probably get you two and a half years then you'll be dead this is quote unquote thank god i got my best friend there i'm facetiming my, my boyfriend at the time yeah, i talked to you right after and um and yes i talked yeah. to you immediately after yeah. uh and i said and i and i black out actually because yeah. I think your brain has a way of protecting you from trauma. My mm -hmm. brain just knew, no. Yeah. And I black out. Thank God best friend starts talking. Mm -hmm. And I just remember going, I'm not normal. It's the only thing I remember mm -hmm. saying. And I said, and then I, I managed to say, so you're telling me that I can have two and a half years with no quality of life. Or I can try to heal mm -hmm. is really what my brain started hearing in that moment. And mm -hmm. thank God I heard it like that. Mm -hmm. Because then it was an immediate decision. Mm-hmm. To change, I was already starting to add stuff, but mm -hmm. it was an immediate overhaul. It was a nutrition overhaul. It mm -hmm. was a, it. I mean, I can start listing things that I do mm -hmm. on a on a daily, weekly basis, and okay. some I, I will actually. I so, want to do that, but let me say one thing about it. I want to just interject. I want to be clear with what we're saying here too, just for responsibility. She's yeah, stage please. four. 
an incredibly aggressive type of cancer. So in her own situation, yes. the chemo factor versus extending life by maybe 18 months, but yeah. no quality of life versus six months. So by no means is either one of us saying no chemotherapy if you get cancer. I'm not saying that, no. There's, there's, there's people listening to this right now that go, I did chemotherapy or radiation and I'm cancer free and I'm in oh, remission. God. So we're not saying that. We're talking about her situation right here. But no doubt, even if you were to do that, some of the things you're doing nutritionally unquestionably are smart mm-hmm. things to be doing. So yeah. what are they? I, and I do appreciate you saying that because mm-hmm. it's really true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am not trying to bash standard of care, and I'm not trying yeah. to make anybody feel like traditional oncology mm-hmm. is not the, the way. I'm not trying to make doctor feel mm-hmm. like I'm anti-doctor. I'm certainly mm-hmm. not. I'm under the and care And in that of doctor's case, my gosh, to be able um, to look another human the, being in the eye and go, yeah. um, you're going to be dead. In, now, to yeah. say you're going to be dead in six months is probably crass the yeah. way that he said it. Sure. But that's difficult news for these people to have to deliver to people as right. well. Right, and he does it all day, probably right. you know, 12 you people a day or right. something. So, yeah. you know, he's caring. So I'm sure. I'm super empathetic towards his job and, yes. and everything, and yeah. all of the oncologists have said similar yeah. things. You mm-hmm. know, you got to start chemo now, 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 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would like people to also know it's not as rushed as they make it seem for most people. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... It gets really scary, if we're being mm-hmm. honest. It seems like, you know, this is a really fast-growing cancer. And I would say, how do you know? Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know, but, I, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want more information, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but please just do what's right for you. And one of the biggest things is, you know, just follow, like, please follow your intuition. Follow mm-hmm. your guidance. Use the word discernment earlier. And mm-hmm. I wanted to say that's really the right word. Mm-hmm. You will, if you pray for discernment, you will get it. Mm-hmm. You have to learn to listen to yourself during all of this. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I've gotten out During of During everything you do. Everything, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So what are you doing? What are you doing different with your nutrition? So, and what are you doing for your treatment? Let's just, we, yeah. we, we are not telling your true story if we don't tell them actually what you're doing. They're yeah. going to follow you on this journey. Yeah. So tell them what's up. Yeah, it's pretty intense. So, okay. uh, so I went from pretty much carnivore to immediately vegan. So mm-hmm. all the juicing. I bought the best juicer ever. I mm-hmm. did all the research on that. Okay. Um, I'm not even, and when I say juicing, I'm not saying like, I make a delicious green juice in the morning. I'm talking <laughs> eight to 12 juices a day. So I'm almost on the hour. Whoa. I'm just overdosing my body in, okay. in nutrition, okay. uh, which is making my hair grow really long and shiny. So it's, you know, <laughs> you know, like there's benefits to this. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it's quite the shift, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm starting a greenhouse in my refrigerator. (laughs) Um, But that's been unbelievable. I'm no longer doing vegan because Mm -hmm. my doctor that I'm under care now with uh, really loves keto. Uh, And that is also because the cancer... Well, that's completely different. Completely different. Uh, The the cancer that decided to reside in my body Mm -hmm. and and grow through blood tests is the only reason we know this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the blood test is off the top of my head, but the cancer that is living in me or was, I don't know, maybe it's gone, Mm -hmm. uh, is feeding off of sugars. Okay. And it was proven through a blood test. He said some cancers are growing that. on proteins, some cancers yeah. are growing on carbohydrates and sugars, some cancers are growing, you know, whatever. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. And he said, don't even touch it. Don't touch carbohydrates. You have to be keto. Yeah. He started talking about the oils in my body, my mitochondria health, and all this stuff. So immediate nutrition shift. Yeah. Still juicing, but now it's all these green juices. So yeah. they're not as yummy as like the carrot and apple and not, the delicious yeah. whatever. Uh, but I don't care at this, yeah. you know, whatever. That's the easiest thing. The juice I've got pretty much yeah. down to a science. But, um, um, every day, hyperbaric chamber. I actually have one in my house, thank God. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have a biocharger in my house, which you guys can check out. It's a crazy energy shifting machine, which is super cool. I use grounding mats as well constantly because I do live in a penthouse, so I'm mm-hmm. not on the ground with my feet in the ground. And you're mm-hmm. you're on the beach. You can get in the beach yeah, and get I'm yourself grounded and grounding, and, and, all the time. And grounded, which is yeah. so important for your health in general. Um, I do ozone at least four times a week, mm-hmm. uh, which they actually take your blood out. And they're spinning it, yep. and they're 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 cleaning it, and then putting it back in. Uh, I also do a hocket ozone, which is basically this chamber where your entire body's inside. You're getting ozone, you're getting infrared, you're also getting um, uh, hype hypothermia so you're getting overheated as well uh all in this chamber where just your head is out and it pulls it's so cool and gross you see all these toxins come out of you every single time you told me that. Um, yeah. it's really cool yeah. um i do uh hi, this is one's really important very high dose vitamin c three times a week mm-hmm. and that's what's been killing off a lot of a lot of the stuff i also have a lot of other infusions as well that i've been doing in germany uh i do red light therapy of the bed mm-hmm. um i get in a in a bed at least five times a week if not every day uh gosh okay what else i know i'm missing things there's more <laughs> and wait there's mm-hmm. more now uh cold, i do cold plunges now which i actually so really enjoy so what are these things so by the way this is her journey 
her way of care for her with a six-month diagnosis, everybody. What of these things will you do when the cancer is gone? In other words, is some of it just for the cancer or when, once the cancer is gone or had you never had cancer based yeah. on what you've learned, some of those protocols, I assume you still would be, I bet yeah. you'd still be doing red light, you still oh, be doing yeah. cold plunge. Yep. Would you be doing uh, hyperbaric? Mm-hmm. What, would you still be doing most There's of those things? There's some things I would do for sure. Uh, one I didn't mention, and it's my favorite, and it's going to yeah. be so weird, so... Uh, I started doing coffee enemas about three months ago, mm-hmm. and I was told years ago to do these, and I mm-hmm. thought that is the weirdest thing ever. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. No way. And I even bought the <laughs> and it was sitting, and I think yeah. I threw it away six months ago or yeah. something. The yeah. irony. The first time I did one, I slept like, uh, I mean, a, do teen- I need a to teenager. Do, it? do I yes. need to do it? Really? Yeah, and okay. you might have parasites, so it might be weird. Why would you say I have stuff. them? You, Why? Uh, you seem kind of buggy. No, I'm kidding. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thank you. But she a lot looked of- right at me like, you You probably have parasites. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I, you do that now? You look at me like parasite. I look like I have parasites. You don't awesome. actually look like you have parasites. But I get like the most, it's instant mental clarity. Okay. Almost like, well, you're like wow, this is crazy. I- instantly. Okay. Uh, and I and, and, uh, and digestion takes the most energy out of everything that you do mm. when you're cleaning the entire lower third out of your colon. Mm. So And then after that, I go do, I actually have at my house a, an ozone, Simply O2 makes an ozone machine for your home. So mm. I have an oxygen tank and everything. I do rectal ozone after it as well every Jeez. time. So there's a lot. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. But I would never change that. I would, I would never stop red light. It's yeah. amazing. The benefits mm-hmm. are just incredible. Um, I, I, and I really believe in this, this ozone stuff in your blood. Mm. This stuff is crazy. I really think that. Hearing I, more and more and more about yeah. it. I'm not r- willing or ready to stake my uh-huh. claim on it because I'm really sort of watching through you and some other people that I know. Yeah. All right. So someone's listening to this. They've cried their eyes out. They are now looking at their own life differently. They've got a perspective. They've, they've said, man, maybe I need to have forgiveness for this person. Maybe I need to get going and hurry up and win. Maybe I need to start live like I'm dying, to quote the Tim McGraw thing that we've talked about. What would you say to somebody? Say, hey, listen, if someone came up to you right now at Starbucks and said, hey, I heard you on the Ed Milet show, and I he didn't ask you this, or i just curious, what would you say to somebody who says, what is the biggest thing you would impart upon to another person about what you've taken from this that we haven't shared yet? In other words... This is my thing I've got from this that I need people to know. What mm-hmm. would you say? I don't care who you are. I need you to know that you need to do what's best for you. And I mean that in a lot of different ways. Mm. I was a people pleaser for sure. Like I wanted everybody to like me, I think, because I wasn't liked very much when I was younger. Mm. So if you were nice to me and then mean to me, it was okay. I'd still be nice to you. Um, and I think too many of us are living for other people instead of living for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I just wish more people would chase that dream that they really care about, would take those risks that matter a lot to them, Mm -hmm. would love the person that they know they're supposed to be in love with, Mm -hmm. or take the, the, the big scary chance that everybody has told them just doesn't make any sense at all and Mm -hmm. just live their life. Because I look at people all the time and I coach people all the time and I just go, my God, you're not happy. Yeah. Like who are, who are you living for? Mm-hmm. Because when you realize that every day is not guaranteed, you're not worried so much anymore about offending people mm-hmm. because of your opinions or your truth. You start realizing that your authentic self is all that you really need to be. Mm-hmm. There's so much good going on in the world, mm-hmm. and we we as humans, I think, spend so much time, effort, and energy on things that just don't matter to us at all, trying to please people we don't even like. Yeah. And for what? At what cost? So that's where I wanted to ask you next is stay right on there. So we've talked about what does matter, and you just covered one thing that doesn't matter. What else doesn't matter? In other words, pleasing other people and other people's opinions, all of that, man, what an absolute beautiful truth. What other things? You're faced with this, right? You have this moment in your life, and everyone at some point We'll be faced with something like this. It may be at 104 years old and you're an old woman laying in your bed someday or you're 34 years old in the prime of your life and being healthy. But at some point you're going to be faced with this is going, my body will eventually possibly end. What doesn't matter? What else doesn't matter? Because Matthew McConaughey said on the show, sometimes you got to just make a list of the things you don't want in your life. Mm-hmm. 
to get clear on what you do want. So we know these opinions of other people. By the way, you're just actually, it's something we've always said, but you're living it now. You're like, trust me, it totally doesn't matter. Yep. What else doesn't matter? I know that's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. But what else doesn't matter? I'm curious. Uh, a most Okay, honestly, yeah. most stuff does not matter. Mm. Most stuff just does not matter. And I mm. wish more people would look at their life and realize that. Mm. The little stuff that drives you crazy, mm. I've said it. Everything just gets, it's, it's clearer when you have something like this happen. Yeah. So I used to say, if it, if it, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it five minutes. Mm. P- would you please live that? Yeah. People are so freaked out about the dumbest little things. And I just know you're not going to care that there was traffic in LA because there's always traffic in LA, right. you know, like it, 20 minutes from now. Mm. So why are you having this huge blow up fight? The, the arguments you're having with your partner. Why? The little things about your kids. Why? The, the stuff that drives you nuts and crazy. Like, none of this stuff really matters. Mm. The little tiny sacrifices. I, I think back on, you know, I, I, when I was starting my, bu- my business, I lived in, um, first in a basement and then in a above a garage you know in a roof that's like this and so you couldn't sit up in bed because you yeah. had to roll out of bed it was like yeah. one of those situations yeah. and I'm like I remember thinking god why am I living here I need to have something more like uh, you know and it pushed me but I also think back I go why did I actually care yeah why did that matter to me why did the fa- you know what doesn't matter fancy clothes don't matter fancy things don't matter unless it brings you joy mm. the only things in life that actually matter are the stuff that makes you smile Period. That's it. Mm. Do you love it? Are you happy? Mm. Are the people you're spending time around the ones that you want to? Mm. Are the activities you're doing in it, is it the hobby you like? Or do you just do it because? No more just doing stuff because. Because that crap doesn't matter. Mm. You start looking at life like this moment's precious, this moment's precious, this one's precious. Mm. And you chase those instead of things, Mm. instead of other people's opinions, instead of any of that stuff. So good. And by the way, for people like you and I, winning is fun. Yes. Right? Winning, achieving, competing, being number one, um, seeing what you're capable of. She's not, She's trust me when I tell you, she's not talking about just sit around and enjoy the moment. She's saying do things you enjoy. If you're a winner, if you're a competitor, yeah. go freaking win and compete because you all know we love that stuff, right? Yes. I'm, I like winning more than I like sitting on the beach. I just <laughs> flat out you do. do, and so do you. I know I do. I've seen you in pickleball, too. Right. He's competitive in everything. Well, <laughs> and, and by the way, so is she. But know. you know what I'm talking about. She's yes, got this diagnosis. She's still speaking my head. She goes, I just freaking slayed it. Best yeah. talk I've ever given. And she lights up when she talks about that. So, th- But this is so profound what you've said. I mean, like, I, just, I just think that sometimes I think when you get – Threatened with your life maybe not being here, you accumulate the wisdom you would have gotten at the end of your life anyway. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's one powerful. of the I think it's one of the blessings that I've seen in you. Now, she's also, by the way, kicked major tail in a bunch of different businesses, right? And there's this side to her that I love that's this boss Lee side. And I want her to show up here a little bit too, because there's these sides. There's this this reflective, kind, gentle, forgiving, wise perspective having patient woman that I really love but there's this other thing this other being who's like I'm gonna stomp you we're gonna win get off your butt let's go and you've pushed people in their lives like you've pushed you what do you think now don't be humble there's no reason for you to be humble now right okay so what has made you you so I remember the first time I spoke you spoke before me I think maybe before or after, but we cross each other backstage. And I know when I meet someone that's the it. Like, everyone has the it, by the way, but I know when someone's released it in themselves. So I want to be very clear. Everybody's special. Everybody has the it. But I know when I've met a human being who's released theirs. Mm -hmm. And I also know when I've met somebody who is still suppressing theirs. And the ones who have released it, boy, that's really good. Those who have released it, I I magnetize to. I'm just like, whoa. And I knew it immediately. And then the second time, like, there's, she's released it. Her version of her releasing it. So you have that thing. You've unlocked yours. What is it that made you so much more successful than basically everybody else in the multiple businesses you've done? Now looking back on it, no reason to be humble. Mm-hmm. We've bared our soul about some really difficult things today. So tell, tell the truth about that. Yeah. Uh, I think I have this fight in me that is ingrained in me from such a young age mm. that I'm just willing to do whatever it takes. Mm. I, I I will not hurt people. That's mm. about where I cross the line. I will not do anything to hurt people. Mm. Aside from that, I will dominate you. 
I really will. Mm. It's just, it's not a joke. And uh, I'll, I'll go in, I'll definitely go deep in it. Mm. I will never forget when I, when we first talked about the diagnosis and I said to you on a coaching call, I said, Ed, I think I need to put boss lead to rest. I think I need to just kind of chill a little bit and go more into just quiet time and whatever. And I remember seeing your face yeah. and you didn't say anything. You went, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And I went, maybe that's not. And then I realized, no, Bossly is the reason I have all of this stuff. Is and I don't mean things. I mean the accomplishments, the mm-hmm. accolades, the wealth, the all. Ev- because she is an aggressor. She doesn't let people stomp all over her. How am I going to let cancer come in and stomp all over me? Oh, no. Like, actually, Bossley needs to show up more than ever. And so the difference with me, I think, is that when everything crazy happened, and, and I, I mean, I'm not going to, going to go into a whole long childhood whatever, mm-hmm. but I would – People want success like ours. Mm -hmm. And I love how open you've been about things with your dad and Mm -hmm. and your childhood more and more over the last few years because the way I describe it is I understand you want our success. Mm -hmm. But you do not want what we've gone through. If you want all this success, you've got to trade all of this bad stuff and you're not willing to, trust me. Mm -hmm. So when I'm nine and I send my dad to jail and I'm raised in a crazy domestic violence situation my whole life. I have to get raised by my grandparents because there's no one there. I become the leader of the household then. Physical violence and craziness like you've never like you can't even imagine. We don't have enough food. We like all of this just turmoil, chaos, whatever. I became the leader. Yeah. And so when people go, you know, in sales as an example, I have never understood why people get so upset about the word no. This one shocks me. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why I went to eight oncologists. Like, come on. Right. Come on. There's got to be one. Because for me, it's it's the first thing somebody tells me is never what I'm going to accept. I don't accept that for me or for my life. So mm-hmm. when someone's like, oh, they, that prospect told me no. Mm-hmm. I go, well, did your parents tell you yes about everything when you were growing up? Because mm-hmm. I was told no always. Mm-hmm. And I just kept selling myself over and over and over again to try to get something. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just, can I stay a little later? No. Can I? No. No. You guys mm-hmm. would ask for ice cream three times and you'd get a yes. It was always no. So <laughs> no doesn't hurt me. Yeah, right? That yeah, turned me yeah. into this. So yeah. then if I'm getting rejected, fine. And also you get scratched. I'm really scrappy from growing up without resources. So I will find a way. Yeah. You tell me it's impossible. I don't think so. There's Mm -hmm. a way. Uh, I'm super big on visualizing. Mm -hmm. You talked about touching your dreams. Mm -hmm. I've been the same way forever. Mm -hmm. I'll sit in the car. I'll go to the car dealership when I can't afford it before, Mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't afford it. I'd go see, I'd go look at the private jets and see whatever. I'd look at the big houses. I'd spent, I was spent, I found our first photo I got to show you. You have no idea. I met you at 10X was the first time I actually met you. Way back. You would, I had bright blue hair. It's craziness, right? So. That was me. I do remember that you were heavier then. Yeah, and you I were bright blue then. hair. I remember that. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> By the way, I've met millions of people, so I often don't remember. I remember that. I paid to be in that VIP section when I really maybe didn't, maybe shouldn't have. Whoa, and I'm so I remember And that. I couldn't. And there were these hu- two huge men, like seven feet tall, that mm. you got the photo with them, and then Grant like rushed you off. Mm. And so we have like a side photo, but it's our first photo we ever took. And it's it's like you were standing I, there when I was taking yes, the picture. Sorry, go yep, ahead. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I but I that. would always just insert myself where other people wouldn't mm-hmm. because people would tell me no. People would say it's impossible. People would mm-hmm. say you can't have this. You can't do that. Women don't do this. Oh, this mm-hmm. is kind of a men's world. I learned investments and negotiation and all this stuff because people told me I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. They said, "Oh, you're just supposed to be this network marketer." I said, mm-hmm. "Network marketers fail at everything mm-hmm. because they're lear- they're trying to learn how to recruit a bunch of people and then mm-hmm. forget about them." Mm-hmm. I'm going to treat this like a business. And Mm -hmm. if I learn business skills, unlike most people that do things like this, Mm -hmm. no one's going to be able to touch me. Mm -hmm. So it's always been, where's the competitive edge? Learn. And then I'll watch somebody maybe in the business space. That's why I went to 10X. There were no Mm -hmm. networkers there, right? I went to 10X because I said, I need to learn more about businesses so I can see what they're doing in their traditional business so I can figure out how to implement that in this kind of business before I had other businesses, right? Because if I do that, then I'm not the first one to do it. I'm the first one to do it the best. The best, yeah. By the way, I'm watching you. This is you. So it's interesting. Like the transition. Just, by the way, you could just feel the energy a little bit. By the way, the topic's different, but the energy's different. And Boss Lee does need to show up to fight this fight as yes. well, right? So there's got to be both. I want to tell you one thing. I want to say something about you. I'm going to brag about you, but I want everybody to hear, see themselves in this. When I went to work at the group home, I went to work at an orphanage. You know, that was my career. Yep. And when I went there, I've often said that I connected with these boys because anybody who's gone through any abuse or dysfunction in their childhood, we have different eyes. We do. Our eyes are just a little bit different. When you look into the eyes of a child who's suffered, Mm -hmm. they just want to be loved. 
and you can feel it. And I have those eyes in my form of it. You have it in yours, no matter what you've gone through. What I didn't know when I worked there is that they also have different hearts. They have different hearts. Because one of the ways we get our love is by achieving. But we do become scrappier. We are tougher. We are more relentless. We do take more no's. We will get after you to win. Because we want to change how we feel so badly. We want to change how we feel so badly. And even I see your face change as I say that. Mm -hmm. And so if you've gone through any dysfunction in your life, when we meet each other, we kind of connect in a way like... I don't connect as well with people who've had easy lives. I wish I did. I wish I did. Mm -hmm. But I often find myself gravitated towards people who have had tragedy or difficulty or abuse or neglect in their life. And I used to think it's because we had the same eyes. It's not why. It's because we have the same hearts. Mm -hmm. Our hearts are the same. I'm getting goosebumps. I've never said this out loud until you were just speaking. And I'm like... That's what I see in her. That's what I see in all of my great friends. It's not their eyes. It's their freaking hearts that are different because of what we've had to go through. And that's why I love you. And if you're listening to this, everybody, if you've had that, that's what you share in common with us. You have to unleash it. But it's a gift. It's a gift because your heart is just different. You're just, it's the heart literally as corny as it sounds. It's the freaking heart of a champion. It's somebody who wants to be somebody so bad and change how they feel so much mm. that they're willing to do anything. And I just realized wow. as you were talking, I've spent most of my life trying to change how I feel. Mm -hmm. Do you relate to that? Uh, I'm like nodding like my head's going to fall off over here. It's yeah. Yes. Mm. At the first time we really had a hard talk conversation, I said, I just, I just want to feel proud. Mm -hmm. This is what I told you. I'm like... I've had all this success and it's like, when is it going to be enough? When am I going to sit there and go, ah, mm. in it? Because mm. I just want to feel. Yeah. You know, you're always chasing. Yeah. Like, and what yeah. you've learned, I think, through this, my sweet friend, my brilliant friend, my powerful friend, is what you're learning through this is maybe I can keep this drive and this heart and actually still simultaneously give myself the gift of feeling these things. I don't have to wait because when time is potentially cut short which it's not going to be in your case but it's threatened to be cut yeah, short absolutely. you go yeah enough of that crap i'm yeah. going to feel these things now and i'm still going to be this boss where i kick yep. ass and i win. mean i considered canceling i considered stopping all my businesses pretty much mm -hmm. i considered stopping my coaching mm -hmm. i considered all of these things and then i had this and then i went no, I get so much energy when I do that because I'm watching their faces. I feel I feel their hearts. I see that I'm changing them in that moment. I get off the I can't do those calls too late in the day because if I do it too late in the day, I'm like, "Woo!" Yeah. You know, like, yeah. "Let's go." And it's so healing mm -hmm. and it's so cathartic and it, and I do feel proud in those moments when I know that I'm shifting people's lives and so that becomes really important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really think if more people would operate from that, that it's truly heart centered. Yeah. It's you don't have to be this crazy shark at the top. You can be a good person. I mean, I, I definitely identify as a shark in ways, yeah. but yep. maybe a, like, not like a, like a baby shark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I would yeah, it's just I, you just recognize it in people and you can yeah. really feel that it, that's a real thing. I feel it in you. I, uh, I think this hour, by the way, has been the biggest difference you've ever made in your life and you've made the difference in millions of people's lives I um rarely cry you made me cry and I um I feel like usually when I do the show I'm like oh this is gonna be so good for everybody else and then there's been moments say I'm like oh this is really good for me mm -hmm. and you're really good for me and uh I love you very much I'm super you. proud of you and Thank you for having the courage because this is a tough lady who's one to say, all right, I'm going to peel it back and I'm going to tell the world what's going on with me. That in and of itself took amazing courage. And the fact that you're kind of documenting this journey, you're going to be the inspiration for millions of people in different areas of their lives. And you were born for this. Everything that's happened to you in your life has prepared you for right now, yeah. 100%. And if you're listening to this, everything that's happened in your life has prepared you for right now if you'll unlock it release that heart that we've talked about today okay thank you go to bossly.com go to i'm boss lee on youtube what's the instagram i'm boss lee i'm boss lee follow her journey um her podcast the people's mentor as well 
while you're doing that, you're just crazy not to get the power of one more. You're absolutely crazy not to have your email submitted at edmylet.com so that you can get early access to shows like this today. And but can I, I just say, I yeah. mean, I know I'm not, I don't need to pitch you because mm-hmm. everybody that is listening to this mm-hmm. follows you, but you have changed my life in more ways than you realize. Thank you. you are, I wish more people got to know you how I get to know, how I've mm-hmm. gotten to know you. Thank you. You are such a pure soul. And I try to pour as much love into you as I do because do. I, there is so much greatness in you. And I know you know you're great, but you. you're better than anybody that just listens to the show or watches you online or walks past you behind stage mm. could ever imagine. Thank and you. our relationship that has evolved over this, this last half year, especially, mm. like I truly treasure you Thanks. as a friend, as a person, as a coach, as a mentor. And you. you're doing more work in this world than you realize thank and you. Uh, i want to give you your flowers too thank while you. you're still here because means the world coming from you amazing thank you, you that really means are. the world coming from you um you know guys every show i say share this i don't think i probably have to ask you to this week but like this message of this hour people need to experience they just do and don't keep it to you please share it with other people god bless you all max out <laughs> <laughs>